Today, I'm going to be showing y'all how to pull the governor out of one of these Predator 212s for extra speed and horsepower. And the best part, it's free. Having a governor on one of these motors is like running a dog with a leash. You're in some control, but not complete. When it sees a squirrel, or in our case, 3,600 RPM, you're completely out of control. So basically, all a governor does is limit or increase the amount of RPMs the engine has to keep it running smoothly and well. The governor also acts as a rev limiter, decreasing throttle once it reaches 3600 RPM. Enough talk, let's tear into this thing. Use 10 and 8 millimeter sockets to remove the gas tank. Before you take the gas tank off, grab locking pliers or Phillips head screwdriver. Once you have the fuel tank off, it's going to start dumping gas everywhere. So pinch off the fuel line with the vice grips or use the Phillips head screwdriver and stuff it in one end. Now we can see the linkage. So basically the only thing that's connecting the actual throttle to this governor arm is this little spring. So when you pull on your throttle, it pulls on that spring, effectively pulling the governor arm, but it's not solid. So the governor still has the option to increase or decrease fuel. And then from the governor arm, there is a straight solid connection back to the butterfly valve on the carburetor. Now at this step, if you don't actually want to tear into the motor because you're either nervous or you don't want to break the gasket, take a clothesline and make a new linkage to put in between there and it'll effectively bypass the governor. But no, let's do this the right way. Next, we're going to be draining the oil out. Use the 10 millimeter again to remove the oil drain plug. Is that gasoline? Oh my god. Um, yeah, we might have a slight issue. Alright, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it was just left with the fuel on. Um, and the float valve was broken in the carburetor, so it was just pouring gas into the um, combustion chamber. But if that's not the issue, we might have a little bit more on our hands. So I'm going to continue the video as is, um, but this could take a turn into fixing a head gasket or something. I don't Hopefully that won't be too much of an issue down the road and there's not a lot of damage in here. Um, this is not my motor, I'm doing this for a customer, so I have no clue how that could have occurred. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's keep going. What you're going to need to remove the crankcase cover is a 10 millimeter socket. So this is where the process can turn from um, an hour to a day. Um, don't rip the gasket. There's a very thin gasket between the two halves of the case and if you stick a screwdriver in there or some kind of prying tool, it'll probably rip and then you'll have to do a new gasket job, um, which you can either do with gasket maker or a new gasket. So let's take, take this off as gently as humanly possible. Let's hope I can get it slightly loose. It's not budging so far, so what I'm gonna do is take a somewhat large screwdriver and use it as a 
device to push um, the side cover off. So basically what you would do is put do as I'm doing right now and then just push and there we go. Started to separate. Perfect. Gasket is still completely intact. So luckily we won't have to put a new gasket in. You know, I was kind of worried about the um, amount of damage that could have been here um, due to running gas in the oil, but it seems to be in pretty good condition. Now what we're gonna re be removing is this wheel in the back. All right, let's hope this works. I'm just gonna put some flex tape on the phone and see if it'll hold it up. Not sponsored by flex tape, but this is minorly impressive. So what you're gonna wanna do is use the pull start to move the crankshaft to a position where we have complete access. There we go. So all we're removing is this pulley in the back. So I've got the um, little governor arm pushed down and out of the way so I can start accessing the pulley in here. Once you have that part taken off, i am got to remove the tiny little clip that's at the bottom there. So typically brute force isn't the way to go, but I think for breaking this pin or at least getting it somewhat deformed so we can take this pulley off might be the move. Well, we accomplished our goal just with um, some extra casualties. It doesn't matter, we're taking this whole thing out anyway. Oh, here it comes. You're not done quite yet. Obviously, get the pin out of there. There's still some more debris out there on the site, but there's also a washer that you cannot leave in there because it will fall out and destroy gears and cost you a hundred dollars. So, try and get something. Typically, you would use a magnetized set to get this thing out, but I lost mine. All right, got it out. Let's just say I massively regret not having one of those little magnet on stick things. All right, so once everything's off of there, I'm gonna give it a quick wipe down with a rag and then we can close this all back up. All right, got it all cleaned out. Now I'm gonna push the governor arm rod back up in there and then we can close it all back up. When putting most engine components together, you're going to want to tighten it to the right torque spec. Um, but unfortunately, I do not have a torque wrench. So I'm going to I'm going to tighten them all down by hand in a cross pattern. So I'll list the torque spec for anyone who wants to tighten these down properly, but pretty much how you're gonna want it 
is tight to the point where, yeah, you're giving it a good tug, but not where you're uh, breaking your arm. Because if you strip one of these out, that's not a great day. So go in a cross pattern to as similar of a tension as you can get it. Got it all back together, it's looking good. Now all we have to do, throw the linkage back together and it's ready to start up. Now you have two options. So I'm just running it with the regular linkage since now there's not a governor to push back against the spring. But what you can do, if you don't have an extra return spring lying around, is make a solid linkage between here and where that connects up on the uh, throttle arm. And then take this spring, loop it around here, and then have it run to here and tighten it down on, and it should return properly. But for now, I'm just going to throw these springs on there as it's going to work fine. And that is a complete guide on how to remove a governor from a Predator 212. So real quick, let's go over the pros and cons of doing this procedure. Um, now, to start, pros, obviously, you're going to have a lot more power. You're going to have a higher top end RPM. Um, and the amount of RPM directly translates into your top speed. So uh, the stock top RPM is 3600, around there, give or take 200 RPM. Um, and with this governor delete, you will be able to hit um, 5K and upwards, depending on if you have 18 pound valve springs, etc. Um, so besides the main horsepower and RPM increase, uh, there are a few possible issues. Obviously, the governor is there for a reason, and it keeps the motor from over revving for too long. Um, so if you're going flat out for like a mile on some crazy drag race or something, your motor might not like that as much if it's not built since it has a stock rod which can break, the oil dipper will break off and hit it in the gears, and a stock flywheel which can actually split apart. Now usually you won't have to worry about any of this as long as you're not running upgraded valve springs which will increase the amount of RPM the motor can get. Um, but it's always a good idea to upgrade your connecting rod to a billet model. And don't hold down the throttle for a few minutes. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. This is a pretty straightforward procedure, but it does get a little bit complicated, and you do need a few special tools. More content coming soon. I'm getting a 110 manual pit bike, and I'm getting my 250cc quad running. Uh, so there should be some good content and riding videos coming soon.